Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Film Look Creator node. And this is a DaVinci Resolve node available within Fusion. And unfortunately, it is studio version only. But the past few days, we've been going over this uh, film damage, grain, this flicker addition to uh, kind of make our footage look old and vintage. And this is exactly what the Film Creator node does all in one node with the exception of some of this film damage stuff. So let's go ahead and just uh, disconnect all this and we're going to add a film look creator. And one thing to know on our film look creator is there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood of this node that we can't change. So one thing to know is this is timeline color managed because what it's doing is it's uh, tone mapping your media to work with this node correctly. That means basically in my settings for my color management, if I go to color management right now, while I'm doing all this recording, I've just got this on DaVinci YRGB, which means I am managing the colors. So anytime I bring something in, I have to do color space transforms to manage those colors correctly, but we can have DaVinci color manage itself. So if I switch this to YRGB color managed, that means DaVinci resolve is going to color manage itself. Same with if I use ACES and if I have ACES set up correctly, it's going to color manage ACES as well correctly when I bring stuff in. So right now under the non-managed, if I go to our film look and I just select say our default 35 millimeter, you can uh, kind of see what it's doing there. It's just changing our look from this original one to this. There's a lot of other settings to change, which we'll go over, but under here it's tone mapping our image or our media to correctly work with this, to get the look that it's supposed to be getting. So if I go to this and I switch this to YRGB color managed and I hit save, you can see our uh, little note here looks a little different. I need to make sure I refresh it a few times. So that's why I mean it's color managed. And when we have it uh, color managed, this setting down here for color space overrides isn't needed because it's using timeline. If you notice, it says use timeline, use timeline. But if I go back to our little uh, area here and I switch this back to DaVinci YRGB, which means I am managing my color and I hit save and I uh, refresh this node and select the 35 in our color space right here. We just need to make sure we're telling it what we're using. So this is rec 709. Our input is linear. And we're outputting it back to uh, rec 709 linear. So now our look is working correctly. So if you're uh, not getting your color space, correct, that is why, whether it's, it depends on whether you're using managed or unmanaged. And we are using unmanaged, so we have to manage it ourselves. So the rest of the note up top, we have presets, so we can use default 65 millimeter, 35 millimeter, cinematic, bleach bypass, nostalgic default with no effects, um, meaning we can skip all these additional effects down here and just do the tone mapping for our color. And we can do clean slate and uh, a custom. So let's go ahead and switch this to default 35 millimeter. And we've got a nice little look going with a bunch of grain and toe mapping on our color. Down here, we have our color blend. So we can change our color blend. We can change our effects blend, which is our uh, effects, which is everything below our color. And right here we have 3d LUT compatible. 
So if I check this, this means it's going to skip or get rid of all those effects so we can export this as a 3D LUT to be used on stuff like monitors and cameras. So let's recheck that. And I already covered our color space override. You just override your color space if you need to. And under our film look is the general look of our film. So we don't have specific films to pick from, but we can pick different looks. So we can pick cinematic, which is the default, Rochester, Alaska, elated or vintage, which kind of emulates some of the old Fuji films and the different films available out there. And unfortunately they don't list them by name, which I wish they did, but they don't. So that is the film look. So basically while you're using this, you kind of want to set it up like you are using real film. So our first thing is, is picking the film. So the film we would be using on an actual film based camera. After that, we can go to our color settings and change anything on our film if we want. So we can change our exposure, our contrast, our highlights, our fade, our white balance. We can change our tint. We can add or subtract saturation. This is using subtractive saturation, so we can remove it or add it. We can change the richness of our film and we can add bleach bypass to the film. So this just helps us dial in that film look a little better. So let's go back to the original 35 and down here, these color settings, when we do switch these, you can see our color settings are changing. That's what these are changing. Under our color settings, we have split tone, so we can enable split tone. And what split tone is going to do is it's going to allow you to split the colors in your shadows and your mids. So if I uh, crank it so you can see what's going on. Once we add split tone, we can change the angle of our hue that that split is splitting. And we can change the pivot location so we can change that look of that split hue. Under here, we have two modes. We have neutral and strong. So it's going to be pretty strong if we have it strong enabled or neutral. And here we can protect our neutrals. That way it's not uh, so prevalent when we're uh, changing and it's keeping those nice skin tones as clean as possible. So let's go ahead and dial something we like. There we go. Under here we have a vignette so we can enable or disable the vignette, how much we want and the size of the vignette. Under halation, we can enable it or disable it. We can check whether it's only affecting the highlight areas only or affecting everything. And in this image, it might be difficult to see some of the halation going on because there really isn't much difference in it, but uh, I can crank the amount and it's going to add halation around the edges of our uh, image there. Like I said, this image is going to be a little hard to see some because there's no super light and super dark areas to see that contrast. But we can add it. We can change the radius of our halation. We can maximize or minimize the saturation and we can change the hue of our halation. So yeah, we can see it barely changing over here a little bit. If I uh, change this radius, you can see what that halation is doing. Because everything on this image was pretty much highlights, so we're not really seeing much. Let's dial in something we like, and there we go. Under bloom, we can enable or disable bloom, which means it's going to give us that nice little washed out look from those highlights. So we can change the amount 
we can change the radius of it. Under our grain, we can enable or disable a grain. It gives us the ability to change the presets. We can uh, play with the amount. We can change the size. We can change the softness. Change our saturation levels. And under the grain, it allows us to uh, defocus our image there a little bit. Under our flicker controls, we can enable or disable flicker. Now, this isn't going to be as prevalent as the flicker we see on this flicker edition down here, but it is there. So if I play it and I crank the amount of flicker, you can see we're getting a little flicker there. And under here, we can change the flicker rate. Under gate weave, this is going to allow us to add a gate weave, which is basically uh, the little holes in the film that when we used real film, it would uh, kind of bounce back and forth within the gate of the uh, camera. So we can change that amount. If we crank it, you can see that kind of moving back and forth a little bit. And we can change the rate. Under our film gate, we can enable the film gate so we can actually see it. It's not going to give you the holes, but you'll be able to see the actual gate around it. So we've got 35, 35 Academy, 35 Vista Vision, Super 16, Super 8, 24 to 1, and we have Custom. And down here, we can enable or disable the curvatures on our little gates there. And here we can change the side padding. And if we wanted it to be custom, we can just use our custom button and uh, we can change the size here. So if you want to get that Quentin Tarantino look where you animate the uh, footage going from full screen down to blanking, you can. So, because this is all animatable, so all you would have to do is go to the beginning of your footage, get the size correct, go to the end of your footage, and change the size. So now if we play it, we've got that little Quentin Tarantino uh, change. And if we wanted to reintroduce some of our film damage, we could easily just uh, grab this, pump it in, but it's going to change our color. So you may want to make sure you're uh, zeroing any of this stuff out. If you want to make sure you're not changing your color, as well as changing additional stuff like your uh, vignetting and all that stuff. So there we go. That is the film look creator node. I will see you in the next no breakdown.